Hello, everybody. Tom Matuska and Brett Wingfield once again at your service Thursday afternoon live with the Matuska Tax Army Supply Company. And uh, man, these weeks just fly by, oh don't my they? Oh, goodness. Yes, um, they do. It's kind of windy in the Iowa Great Lakes today. They were going to have white caps on the lake. But we didn't last night. We didn't last night, and we had a little outing with the entire crew here yes, on uh, the Prince, of, what was it? Yes. Lady? Yeah, something lady. <laughs> um, beautiful boat down out of um, Okoboji Boats, Parks yeah. Marina and Okoboji Boats. And uh, man, we had wine and food. and That was fun. That um, was... It couldn't have been a more beautiful evening. And I think, I think there's um, Facebook pics running yeah. around out there that, that uh, show just how pretty the Lakes area is this time of the year. And had a great time. We did. Sandwiches and punch and, and uh, carrots and broccoli All and kinds of good healthy stuff. stuff and <laughs> uh, the only thing missing was a fishing pole. And I, I think know. there was more than one person aboard that. Uh, I've never been on a boat before that you had to say, Captain, permission to come aboard. I mean, that's how oh. big this ship was. It's big, that wasn't was it? A, that, yes, it was. Um, and you had to have permission to come aboard. Yep. Uh, it was pretty nice. Anyway. Uh, I think everybody enjoyed it, and we had a great time. We did. We did. That was a ton of fun. And we're getting into uh, fall here. I mean, it seems fallish anyway. It's uh, cool in the mornings, cools down at night, and that gets every taxidermist thinking of a couple things, how he's going to break mm -hmm. away to go hunting and fishing, yep. as well as how he's going to get his work done <laughs> and how he's going to combine the two. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's kind of funny with the taxidermy school. Um, we always ask students, what made you want to become a, a taxidermist? And uh, it's always, I love hunting and fishing. Well, all of you Can't people out there know <laughs> that if you love hunting and fishing, you're going to be busy this time yep. of year. And it's your favorite yep. time of year, and you're going to be busier this time of year than any other. Yep. So make sure you make some time for um, the important things in life and chasing that big buck and catching that big fish and yeah shooting some ducks and send us pictures and send us comments and um, show us pictures of the products you uh, mounted on our or the yeah. the trophies that you mounted on our products we got a lot of new stuff and I know I don't want to let the cat out of the bag so to speak but we got lots and lots of new new things coming out for for 2022 already oh remember 22. a while back when you look in the popular mechanics magazines, they say how um, this should start to emerge in 2022, and it's it's people flying around with little jetpacks and <laughs> yes. funny looking cars yep. and all that sort of thing. We're here, we're here, and now it's going to be yep. 2030, and then we'll be there. I mean, yep. Some of us will anyway. But <laughs> anyway, uh, time flies. It does, um, and we've been spending a lot of time on the walleye project <laughs> we and did. we're going to put the walleye to bed. <laughs> That's a good place. We're going to take him. a fillet knife to this walleye. Yeah. Um, but we tried to show you everything we can. Like if any, on all of our video presentations, um, we try not to leave a lot out and yeah. we can streamline them. Um, but what that's going to do is kind of give you a half-baked idea of how to do whatever it happens to be, a deer head or a bird or, you know, bird head or fish or whatever. So we, we draw them out. Some of you experienced taxidermists might go to sleep on some of our productions, but we try not to leave anything out. Um, two things come to mind that I would like to tell you about that we left out. Ooh. One is um, with the spray max, you want to oh, yeah. seal your fish before you put the spray max on yeah. so that your colors don't run, like mm -hmm. especially the spot pen. None of the paint is really going to run, but the spot pens can be a little bit um, yeah, the, um, what are they called? It's, uh, the Copic markers. Copic markers. Yeah. Um, the Copic markers. Um, you put your gloss on too heavy, it can change color a little bit, and it can run. So make sure that you yep. seal your fish good with either the Fixative, yep. or we even use the Krylon gloss. Yeah. You know, a nice 
soft coat in between colors with a Krylon, Krylon um, gloss or matte if you choose. Matte doesn't hurt either, but it seals in everything so that when you do come in and give them a good gloss, things don't start running and changing yeah. colors on you and things like that. The other thing which we thought was kind of neat is, won't do it now. Oh, hey, this is your, the this spray, spray max. I know all of you were crunching numbers when we were showing you this the other day, but the spray max um, is good for advertised 48 hours. Yep. And it has sat on our table here um, since last Thursday. Our fish was dry within an hour. You can touch it really. Yep. Um, you could probably fingerprint it if you pushed hard, but this stuff dries really, really fast. Mm -hmm. It's probably one of the fast, fastest quality glosses there are. But this is only good once you mix it up for 48 hours. However, will it do it? This is the same can. This is the same can. Um, I could gloss another fish right now. Yes, you could. And I have, we glossed two, but I have another, I have probably three-fourths of a can yep. left and we kind of wasted it just for the live presentation, but it's spraying it's exceptional good. good. Yeah. Um, now it probably won't tomorrow morning when we got more fish to, to gloss, but just because it says 48 hours and, and we won't guarantee it any longer than that, but uh, this is good for a few more fish. Yes. And that's yeah. a full week. A full it's week. It's been a full, a full week. week. Yeah. So that, I wanted you to know that. That's uh, kind of a, little bonus they say 48 yeah. hours but they really yeah. you've go got a little bit more yeah i'm sure it depends on heat and moisture and mm -hmm. all that good stuff too but okay so um the fish are done and now it's time to do something with them put them on something or um there's all kinds of different hanging hanging methods there's single fish i mean like just for a single fish you don't have to put them on on any of these things. You can do just the fish. And um, for those we use, is it the Mount Mate hanger, the little yeah. fish hangers? Yep. And uh, you just screw it right onto the back of the fish. They got little rub rubber feet on them and they can be jumped over like a little, they have little cogs in the top, little keys yeah. that you can balance them. If you ever wanna balance something, find the center of gravity, you just take your mounted fish and lay them out past the table, this is not a fish, but center of gravity is gonna be right about here. And you can do that yeah. with a fish. We do that all the time with um, a game head that's maybe got an excessive yeah. turn in it. Slide it off the edge of the table, line it up kind of straight, slide it off until it starts teetering, put a little mark, and that's where your hanger's gonna go. Yeah. Um, you can do that on your driftwood, you can do it on fish, you can do it on bird mounts on driftwood because you don't wanna, yeah hang them on the customer's wall, have them hang them up and fall off and break, and then yeah. you're gonna have more work than you wanted. So um, find the center of gravity. But uh, you can use the little um, um, mount mate hangers. They work <laughs> exceptionally good. Some people put a little block of wood on the back of their fish. Yep. They hang nice and flat and um, um, put a hanger once they yep. find where to hang. Um, we have other new things. These are new for this year, um, the ghost hangers. Yep. These are kind of originally made for birds, but there is no reason um, they come in different lengths and different sizes um, that this can't be used for a fish. Yep. And they've got little keyhole hanger slots in here and you could take two screws so they don't pivot and you could suspend the fish off the wall. Yep. These can be bent. They're wire, heavy wire. Um, you could take one of the straight ones, they come in a variety of sizes. I think they should be on the website by now, mm -hmm. I'm thinking. Um, come in a variety of lengths and sizes. Um, you can take this, make a little loop on the end of it, bondo it in the back of your fish. Um, yeah. You could even, if you were a real crafty person, um, fasten this in the tail portion of your fish with the hanger hid mm -hmm. way back by the tail fin and there is nothing connecting that fish to the wall that people will see. So the reason they're called ghost hangers is because they're like a ghost. You won't see them. That's right. 
boo. <laughs> it's almost that time of um, year too. But it's it's just a very handy way. But just because a lot of the a lot of the bird taxidermists are using these on birds, um, don't think they're just for birds. They're yeah. great for fish and and other things. Sure. Jumping little gopher off the wall. This would be a perfect thing to hide Let's his little tail behind the hanger. But um, the ghost hangers are new to us, and they're um, we're kind of excited about them. We would. Um, on a bird, just sharpen these up, sharpen them. We got a yeah. belt sander here, and we sharpen those up. And you can heat them up if you want to, or you can just force them in. But they'll go right into a styrofoam body pretty easily. Um, on our fish, um, we had, if you look back, or if maybe you remember, we just did a, a wire. We have a heavy wire, and we have both galvanized and annealed. The annealed does not quite have the spring in the memory. It's a little bit easier to work with. Um, annealed wire, remember, will rust. So clean it up real good. It's not going to turn red on you or anything, but, but is susceptible to rusting, unlike the galvanized. Um, doesn't matter which one you use. This one we use galvanized. And you can take a look at the back what we did. We bore a hole in the back of the fish and enough so that the wire could run through the length a little bit, mm -hmm. gives them a lot of support. If you don't have a very good anchor in here and you start twisting your fish on whatever you put him on, you're gonna break it loose. So a lot of times we'll do a pretty extensive cavern back there and put um, the wire in there with auto body putty. And make sure and just let that auto body putty cure good and that way it doesn't yeah. break free. And now, now, Hopefully, if you want it, we do this all the time. If we're setting eyes or working on fins or something like that, you can bend this fish and you can even get an idea of what kind of pose you want and he'll stay there. So it's kind of the wire, the wire is a handy way to do it. And we started doing this um, many years ago and, and we used to, uh, remember we used to mount our fish flat on and we would prop board. up the heads and prop up the yeah. tails on, we used to call it Buffalo buffalo board. buffalo board, yeah, and it was that that soft you could pin to it. I that like that stuff. Nice thing you could it was pin very to, yeah. handy um, to work with, but that's difficult to find anymore. Um, so now, decide what you're going to do with this fish. You've already talked to your customer about it, and to see, um, you know, what he wants. He's either going to want driftwood, or he's going to want driftwood or rocks, or he's going to want no hanger at all or who knows what, maybe even a pedestal mount. You know, don't be, don't be afraid of pedestal mounts and we'll get into mm -hmm. those and show you uh, at another session, not today. Okay, okay good. <laughs> um, so this person wants his on a, a nice piece of driftwood and we carry a pretty nice um, extensive array of cedar driftwood. Cedar driftwood comes from Texas. Um, this piece weighs seven pounds. Seven pounds in addition to a, maybe a great big reproduction, and you can have a 30 pound piece Easily. of um, art on your wall. Yeah. And if it ever falls, you're gonna have a 30 pound piece of art on top of a best customer <laughs> you know, scenario. So um, we've used real cedar for years and years, years, but with COVID, we had a hard time getting it. Mm -hmm. um, subject to availability. Most of you people know that um, when COVID happened and, and people found out that they don't have to work, how did they find that out? I don't because know. we never found that out. We didn't. All of you people, COVID people that decided you weren't going back to work, we'd like to hear from you because <laughs> we want to learn how you do that because <laughs> evidently it works because there's a lot of people out there um, that has, have made it work. Yeah. So the woodcutters didn't go back to work. So when the woodcutters didn't go back to work, we don't get our cedar driftwood. Um, the wood tumblers didn't go back to work. The woodcutters didn't go back to work. So we had to look for other alternatives. So we turned to um, a lot of artificial products. Yeah. Which fortunately you've been building a library of for quite a few years now. We've got a really nice selection of artificial and driftwood. The more we use it, the more we kind of like it. Mm -hmm. um, this is one of our wraparounds for for our uh, full shoulder mounts. You can mount a, a deer or a bear, you know, right in this area. Got a little habitat. Um, we like to tailor them to 
different customer will see something on our wall and we like to tailor it to a winter scene. You can add a little snow on the top of this, little icicles, things like that. Um, maybe some pine boughs, spruce boughs, mm -hmm. and you can make it into a winter scene. Um, you can make it into an early fall scene, a little of our birch branches. We have some real realistic birch leaves yes, and, and that sort of thing. Um, and these, this weighs with the rocks. And now you, you guys all think I am extremely strong. Well, I'm <laughs> not. These aren't real rocks. This is not real wood. This thing weighs four pounds, maybe three pounds, probably. And that's big. Um, and yeah, it's, it is big, big yeah. and it's strong. Um, this is made of 10 pound foam and 10 pound foam, as any of you that have worked with foam, different foam densities, if you can imagine the foam in a can that you shoot around your outlets is probably a half a pound yeah. density. Um, the foam that we carve our fish out of is one and a half pound, I'm sorry, that we carve our fish out of is one and a half pound yeah. density. Um, the foam that we make our mannequins, deer heads, birds, and fish are is three pound density, and this is 10. Um, 10 is strong enough that um, you can pound a nail in it like it's harder than balsa wood, softer than pine. So it's, it's very strong stuff, holds up really, really well. Any of the long branches are reinforced with, there's either wire or dowel through them okay. to prevent them from breaking. Um, occasionally during shipment, we'll get a broken one from time to time to fix them. Um, Gorilla Glue works really yeah. good, correct? That's a urethane, yeah. Um, so we would, you know, say we broke this off if it got broken in shipment. Um, we put a little Gorilla Glue in there, put it back together, run a screw right down the length of it, and bury the screw head, and either a little bit of uh, epoxy sculpt or magic sculpt or fix it sculpt, fix it, a little bit of yeah. Bondo in there, and you can fix it, and nobody will ever know it, and it's stronger than ever. And they have a nice backboard in them too. They're oh, not yeah. just not just solid foam. They have a good backboard for installing hangers and for installing any any of your hardware or the wire that we're going to put in the fish. And most of the time, if the wood is thick enough, there will be the backboard will be doubled up. Yep. So yep. doubled up five eighths. So two five eighths. Yep. yep. Inch and a quarter. Yep. I wasn't very good at fractions, thanks. <laughs> I, was, I was talking myself into a corner there. <laughs> five eighths and five eighths, think quick. Uh, um, sure. um, but we have a lot of stuff. Anyway, they're, they're painted. We have a pretty crafty crew and you yes, can get these are. either painted, detail painted, or you can get them base coat painted. Yep. And with the base coat, the foam is already co colored and then they'll, they'll put a really nice wash coat on there. And so that a lot of you people, um, First of all, you can probably paint them. I don't think you can, but you can try to paint them better than our people can. Um, so you can paint them, paint them yourself, yep. or maybe you just want different color scheme. Sure. Or you, you can paint them at any time. And we just okay. use um, basic latex house paints work yep. exceptionally good for painting these. So mm -hmm. that's, that's the driftwood situation. We've got a pretty nice selection. Um, we also have a fun selection of rocks. Same, yep. same thing here just an assortment of, we have two kind of rocks. We call them um, granite rocks or field stone. Field, I think we have field, field stone, yeah. which are something you'd find out in the, out in the field um, <laughs> around here. And they're made of granite around here. Um, or we have river rock and the river rock tend to be a little bit smoother. This is river rock. And again, it has a double wood backboard in the back. So that, I mean, this would look exceptional with a big old crappie or, you know, on it or a nice trout. Um, you can put the wire in, fasten it in the back, bend the trout the way you want to, and, you know, put mm -hmm. on a little piece of stump. You know, these don't have to be left alone. You can add uh, all kinds of vines and that sort of thing. So these are fun. Here's another example. This one was must have been used and then not used. Yeah, I um, think we took something off. But uh, this is a kind of a, a wood piece with some river rock in it. 
That's kind of a nice combination. You get both the driftwood and the rock elements um, just to give something a little bit different. For uh, it's fun to see. Uh, we go to a show and oh man, you and I are looking at different things that <laughs> yeah. Mandy looks like, looks at, and she runs from mount to mount saying, this is this our is base, our, this, this is, is our base, ours. this is our base. <laughs> this is our um, I just saw somebody use this online the other day on a trout, and it was really, really a pretty presentation. Yeah. Um, I've always liked that one. And we've seen some from Rich White recently that have been really, really nice. It's fun to see you guys send us pictures of that. You know, mm -hmm. um, we use them in, in advertising, we use them in the catalog. Um, it's nice for people to see all the, and, and all the different uses. You know, for me, I like fish, so for me, I'm always looking at this piece, how mm -hmm. could a fish go on there? Yeah. But there's people mounting mink that mm -hmm. sure. this is great for a mink and a stringer fish pulled up out of the water or people do the craziest yeah. things with our bases. Um, we have that big octagon base that oh, Brad yeah. Grabber <laughs> cut in half and did yeah. a sea ducks on. Yeah. And you people are so creative on what yeah. you do. It, it is different than the way I think. Um, that wraparound base would actually, we talked about it earlier, would actually make a really good fish base. This one works well with shoulder mounts and wall pedestals, but there's your shoulder mount orientation, but you could easily twist it. Great for a big old that. musky. Yeah. Um, you could twist it a little bit sideways. You could put two walleyes on it, maybe here and on the other side. Um, and then then lots always, of different uses. Always be thinking because you can have a fish coming down here and you never know how to connect that little perch that he's chasing. Yeah now you got something down here. Yep. Or this stuff is so um, foam is easy to work with. You can cut this and you can bend it up at a different angle yes. yep. and reattach it and fix the seam. Um, um, I think we've even done a whole Facebook feature on that, yeah. on altering these driftwood pieces. So there's a lot of options. And what else? Oh, we got pedestals. Pedestals, yep. This is, this is unpainted and this is kind of a a darker version of a, we call it a wash coat, a base coat. And um, this is just one of our pedestal bases. This works great for a fish. You know, you could have a, you know, one or two or three or four fish coming down, oh, yeah. you know, uh, make a nice little presentation. Um, I have seen people mount this to the wall. Yep. I've yep. seen people take the big one and the small one, connect them together for the wall. Mm -hmm. um, there's just no, it's whatever your imagination can come mm -hmm. up with. So that's another kind of fun version. Okay, so should we show them how we do this? Yeah, we better get to doing it. Now, we used to in the old days, and it still works, but we just don't do it anymore. <laughs> In the old days, we would take a piece of wood like this. Yeah. We would take two, maybe four or five inch pieces of wire, sharpen them up on both ends. One end we would put on the sander and make kind of a chisel point, <coughs> pyramid-y type point. And on the other end, we would make it a cone point, put it in the drill and drill it in, drill it in. And you got two little salad forks coming out. Mm -hmm. Then we did, did this for years and years and years. Then we would take that fish, we'd line him up, and we would start pushing. And if you did it right, it didn't come out the front of the fish and into your hand, and you could force mm -hmm. that, those pokies into that fish. And then if you needed to move him, you could move him a little bit like that, a little bit like that. If he was loose, pull him off, put a little glue in there, and stick him back on. Before they invented wire, we used owl rods. We used a lot of dowel rods, and the reason yeah. we used dowel rods, we just had one. What did I just, oh, that was the thing I had. Um, we used to use dowel rods because I would have people come in, and we, I used to have brackets, metal quarter-inch steel brackets that came mm -hmm. out, and just for fish. And I would screw it on the back of the fish, drill a couple holes, epoxy them in. Then the customer would come and say, hey, you did this nice fish for me. Now I want two of them on one piece of wood. Now I go, how am I going to get that quarter inch steel rod out of there? Because yeah. I couldn't get a screwdriver back there to take it off the fish. So then I would have to take a hacksaw, cut it off, cut it off. <laughs> Hence, we went to dowel rods. Yep. Yeah. It's kind of an evolution thing. <laughs> okay. 
So first, let's explain what we're going to do. In case it doesn't work, you knew what we were trying to do. <laughs> um, I learned this, I guess, from Jim Kimball. This is how he did a lot of his bird work and things like that. And um, it's very simple and common sense, and it just worked very, very well. But first of all, we're going to have a wire go through the base. This one had a hole in it because we did it once before. And then we want that wire to hide in the back, correct? Mm -hmm. So we take a spade bit and we drilled a recess. And if your wood ha happens to be doubled here, um, which it should be, but not always, um, you have a place to recess that wire. Mm -hmm. So this is going to go through here with the fish on it. We're going to adjust the fish where we want it. We're going to trim off what we don't need. We're going to bend this wire over, snip off that big excess, and take a couple screws or three, and we're going to hold that wire in place in the recess. Actually, just the same. Kind of the same as the that. The same way exactly. this is held by screws. So it'll just be countersunk into the back of the, into the back of the driftwood. Yep. And that's not going to look so pretty. So what we do is we'll take auto body putty, mix it up, spatulate it right in the little recess. And as soon as it gels, we take a rasp and we rasp it off. And you have a nice finished connection. And that will never turn. And the other end we bondoed into the fish. Yep. So that's the that's the concept. If we can do it for you and it works, all the better. Sometimes these things don't work as good in real life. Oh, they're gonna work great. Are they? <laughs> You're such an optimist. We work good together. I temper your enthusiasm sometimes. <laughs> Curb. Okay. Let's do this. I like to now. This person wanted rocks and wood, so in mm -hmm. my head, thinking, whoops, could you hand me one of those little mm -hmm. rock clusters? Oh, we didn't show them this. Yes, several to choose um, from. You can't drill holes in rocks, and you can't um, glue them onto this base, so we also have foam rocks, 10-pound mm -hmm. test rocks. And if you want to see us, how strong these are, uh, Mandy and I had a bet that I could drive over them, and it'd still be good and not crushed, and I did it with my big truck, <laughs> and I want a steak supper with that. Did you ever collect on that? Probably more than once. Oh, okay. But, all right. Um, so anyway, this person wanted driftwood. This is a nice, one of our nice pieces of driftwood, artificial wood. And um, we're going to add some rock, kind of like we'll situate it in here. However it looks, looks good. Nice. We'll put it I on like the that. table so it gets nice and flat. But... Uh, now to fasten that, we'll, if we have time, we'll show you how to fasten that also. But it's nice and lightweight, extremely, extremely strong, um, and it'll be a nice addition to this. Yes. Paint it any color you would like. Okay, then, let's do this. Let's take, hold that up where you think you would like it, because mm -hmm. you have an artistic mentality. Yeah. Somewhere in... This good spot, I think. Yeah. Okay. Now, how's that going to look with our little rocks down here? Is it going to be okay? Yeah. Good. I think that would work. Okay. Now, I'm just looking at that mountain fish. I like to have these around because um, I, that fish has a big wire coming out of the back of him, and it's hard for me to work around that wire. But one of these fish-on-fish -fish forms that's laying in our to-do yep. pile um, <laughs> is perfect for this. So I'm going to say. Point your finger right where you say, right there. Good. Something like that. And I intentionally uh, put this piece on the mounting stand so that the plate was out of the way. So. Nice. We have, I don't think you'll need it, but we have a uh, long drill bit. A short one would probably work. Normal one would probably work. And I'm kind of guessing on that, that's a pretty hefty gauge wire. Is that like about a, a six? Is that a six? I bet it is. Six yeah. gauge wire. 
Um, we use a lot of six gauge in our bigger fish mm -hmm. because once this is set and he's where he's supposed to be and we shorten that wire up, we won't have the bounce that you have with a lighter wire. Good, good angle? I think so. Good to go? Now, we're going to make this trench in the back to hide our wire. Yep. And it doesn't have to be pretty because we're going to dress it up later. Could you use your fancy new little plunge router? You could. <laughs> um, we do a lot of work on our Bob Fothering mounting stands. Um, we use them for oh, gosh. birds. We use them on all of our game heads. We use them on elk. We yeah. use them on fish. Um, it's just nice to have something nice and sturdy that's adjustable. So that's why we have this on there. Now I'm just going to, it doesn't matter what angle you do it at. Um, I don't foresee needing anything. The wire's not going to interfere with me. So I'm going to make maybe about five of these, four or five of mm -hmm. these together. Sound okay? And now you're choosing to go deep, just deep enough to bury the wire, the thickness of the wire. Me, yeah, and maybe a little deeper, but now where I will end up in trouble is, say it's an area that doesn't have double, yeah. and maybe I don't have a half to five eighths inch of wood, and all of a sudden I'm into foam. Then I'm gonna have to rely on Bondo to, or Auto Body Putty yeah. to hold everything. Now I'm just moving the tip of this spade bit as I, as I go down to the edge of the rim of the previous circle. Good enough? I think that ought to work. Okay, now you want to take that fish out of there. Yeah. Now anytime you're working with with um, six gauge wire, it's heavy duty. It is. And, and Kate, it's hard to I'll bend. Show them over here. If I can get the bit in for you, you will. <laughs> we'll just take these out. This one had four wires on the back side. Or four screws holding the wire secure. Hold it with my hand so that when I drop the last screw, it won't fall or swing. And now I'm just going to bring this and straighten this wire so that we can bring it back through that hole. This is usually the trick, and we don't want to break that wire inside the fish, so I'm supporting both sides. That'll come right out like that. Straighten that out just a little bit for you. There you go. Okay, see if he goes in. My hole may not be big enough. See if it, oh, look at that. Oh, tight on the wood side. Okay, let me wiggle that out a little bit. It's tight, I think it would go through, but for the purposes of what we've got, we'll open it up doesn't need to be tight because we're going to bondo over it. I'm going to try from this side one more time, oh. just to be safe. All right, may take a bigger bit. See if that'll go. Oh yeah, nicely. Got it? Yep. There he is on there. I'm going to bring him a little more. Okay. Camera. Now, let's, uh, if you hold him, I'm going to cinch him a little tighter. I'm just going to take this on that wire and grab it and bring it in. Got a little bit. Oh, that's coming through gaining? nice. Yeah, gaining quite a bit. There we go. That's nice. So far good? 
I think so. We've got clearance for the tail. We've got clearance and for the pectoral fins. And we can, yep, and we've got some room. Okay, let's turn him sideways so they can see the back. Okay, and I think Kate has got go. us over there. I'm gonna pull him out just a little here. Okay, now, if you would hold that head, mm -hmm. I'm gonna to begin to bend the wire. Um, something that helps to bend the wire, we're gonna, I'm gonna bend it to give me an idea what I want for length, then we'll cut it off. Sound mm -hmm. good? This is just a box wrench. I can stick it right on like so. And you might show them, I think your arm might be in the way, but you might show them just how you're putting that wrench on there. There you go. I put that wrench on. Um, doesn't matter, I can do it this, this direction to start, and then I can get a little bit deeper by flipping it around. So bec just because the wrench has a little angle in it. Yeah. Okay, and then watch that you don't pull him in too tight. Okay, now, cut it. I think so. That's a nice, tight, angled bend because Tom was able to use that wrench and bend against it and get a really nice, tight angle. Break it? Yep. Okay, now, you still good over there? I think so. Okay, now I'm gonna get the little hammer and I'm gonna tap him. Um, actually, I don't even think you need to. It don't need straight to? Through. Nope. I think that finished off really good. This never works that good on I know. stage. <laughs> okay, now one screw on each side might take more, but should be all it takes. And I don't cinch them in. Now, that, that screw pushed the wire over to this screw. And I might even put another one in there just to be safe. accidentally worked exactly the way it's supposed to. Okay, now all my screws are countersunk. Nothing's out there. And they all overlap the wire. The heads of the screw are sandwiching that wire so it can't back out. Would you want to mix some yeah. auto body pump Absolutely. putty up for them and we'll show them how to hide that. Yeah. This is, uh, now you can leave it like this. If you ever have to move this fish, take him off. I've done that uh, many times where the customer comes in and they want to change something. And now what do you do? Um, I have before chipped out the auto body putty, taken out the screws and worked that wire back out. Um, now you can't make it any longer. You've already cut it off. So you're confined to the length of wire that you have. I have also cut it free from the fish yep. and gone in and put a new wire Every in the wire. fish. Um, you could even go the ghost hanger route sure. and skewer the fish. Yep. And you can mix this hot to save um, time. Um, it's real quick and easy to finish this mm -hmm. off and um, kind of looks and nice, makes, makes it real. Incidentally, I'm just going to use a white hardener so we don't have a pink spot back there or a blue spot. This will just be a real neutral gray. Um, you wouldn't have to do that, but we have white and we use it for a lot of things. So We have blue hardener, we have red hardener, we have white hardener. Um, anytime we're working with any of our, our rocks and things like that, uh, most of the time we don't want blue or red. Yeah. Um, so we'll use the white cream hardener. Yeah. And... Uh, and you can, any of our damage. You can put areas. a little bit of color in it too if you want to. Add you a does, little bit of paint. Do We've done that. Um, but I just mix this thoroughly to a nice even consistency and now I'm going to just going to push it in making sure to get any air voids out. Force it in there and, act, and I'm going to leave it 
a little bit high and we will rasp that off in just a minute after it sets up. And you could use epoxy sculpt, fix a sculpt, anything like that, but auto body putty, we always have it around here. Um, it's fast, easy, um, less expensive. Something like that, and we'll make that pretty in just a minute. And while that's setting up, don't go have coffee because it'll turn into, <laughs> it'll be a big it's sand concrete, job. Yep. Um, but that's the way our fish is positioned on here. And once that, once that auto body putty sets up, we can, we can tip the fish's head in, we can um, tip his tail out, yep. we can have him go up, have him go down. Um, it's kind of a selling point that I show a lot of customers. Um, if a customer ever comes in and goes, oh my gosh, I was hoping you put, the, put him down and you've got him fighting up position. Not to worry, you know, we're gonna bend him and he'll stay just like this. It'll, it just works really, really good. Yeah. Don't throw away your excess because you wanna be able to test. And I can see this is already starting oh, to gel. Oh, you mixed it hot. I did mix it plenty hot. So this is already starting to gel and we'll be able to rasp it in just a minute. And this is gonna be a real pretty fish. It is, it is. Now, if you notice, I don't know, you probably can't see on the camera, but any of this, these products are dry looking to me. Uh -huh. So if your fish has a nice gloss to it, if you wanted your fish and your habitat both glossy, they're both underwater and a fish probably isn't glossy underwater, but um, I always prefer glossy fish. Um, we'll take just the Krylon spray can and dust this to give it a little bit of luster. Um, too much luster, you might look plastic, so not, yeah. we don't want to go that shiny. But um, once he's completely done, I'll maybe take just a little plastic and put it over the fish and dust it with a little gloss, dust all around it with a little, little mm -hmm. gloss. That works nicely. Um, I think I'll rasp that for him quick if you sure. want. If they want to see that. I'm just going to use a little Sureform rasp. Everybody thought I was being super sloppy and put that on too heavy, but now we'll clean that up so it's nice and pretty. And honest, it doesn't take that long. And it's, it's factory. Yep. Nice and clean. Even filled that little split right there. Um, we have a, we had a student one time when he came and his term for doing an exceptional job. Whoop, nope. no fish. Um, <laughs> I didn't tighten that up very good, huh? Um, was uh, factory. He wanted oh. everything factory looking. And uh, that was just his term for above and beyond. So yeah. it looked factory. And uh, like the people that knew what they were doing. So any of our work, and like you just did here, looks factory. Right out of the good. fish factory. Okay, now, um, can we, Put him on the table, would that be sure. okay? Um, you hold the fish in the mm -hmm. base and I'm gonna take a couple screws out. And the reason is I'd like, I'd like these rocks when we put them on to be on the, the back of them, kind of on the same plane as the driftwood base so that they can't see behind it and see that yeah. they're not. So I will hold. I'm gonna loosen. Yep. Ready? You go that way a little. Okay. Yeah. Now, you go ahead and arrange one of those the way you'd want them. Oh, gosh. And that might look nice. Did you do it already? I think so. Um, how about a landscape driver thing? Oh, maybe I got one. Did you find one? I'm not sure. How much do I have to go through? A lot? Not, not a whole bunch. No, nope, I don't. Um, we can probably use a regular one. 
Yeah, I think it. All right, I can go from the other from side too. Three inch from back there. Dada's prepared. Ready? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it. Let me go underneath here. Yeah. That'll work. You hold that right mm -hmm. there. Now I'm gonna just take a torque head screw and I'm gonna make a hole in the wood. And this is actually gonna make a hole in my nice pretty rock, but with a little bit of auto body putty, we can make it go away. Now I sunk that right up in there and that's only that's one nice screw and, and it's pretty strong. Now, if you turn him, or give me the back of the wood, I'll bring one in from the back of the wood. Should be pretty. That should be pretty solid. More, uh, more rock? rocks. I yeah, sure can. We like them. Uh, see what you can make happen there, and I'll grab another screw. I like that. We can go up tight like that, or we can come down over here. That's the that. spot? I think so. Now, I've done this before. Give it to the customer and you got a screw head showing through your rock. Okay, let me grab one. One more screw over here. I mean, that, that anchored really nice. That's nice and snug. It, um, the second one, the second screw always helps keep it from spinning in case someone were to grab a hold of it. But security wise, these 10 pound density rocks um, take a screw really nice and hold, hold oh, good and tight. See, I can do this. Oh yeah, there you go. Okay, now let's put it back that. on there. Get that. And we'll see what we got. And the only reason I like to take them off is so I can put those uh, rocks on a more level base. Ooh, let's do this. <laughs> Good. That must be your wire. You're in the wire. Yeah. <laughs> Of all there the places. Go. There you go. Oh, backwards. There we go. That's nice and tight. And when you put them back on, make sure you leave a spot for the hanger because you might as well put a hanger on at this point. There we go. Okay, is he pretty? I bet he is. Now, to me, he's, he's angled a little bit this way and you can you can bring him down a little. You could, you could angle him more or you can tip him up. He's very, very maneuverable right now. Good? Yeah, I think that's gonna be nice. We could add a little green if you wanted. I like it. Um, this is, uh, we, unfortunately, every fish I do seems to get this because <laughs> I really like the stuff. Um, it's wire moss coated bendable branch. Yeah. Moss coated branch, I think it's probably called in the, in the catalog. Um, but you can cut this. You don't have to use the whole thing. You can make it real subtle. Um, I usually don't use all of it. And I'll take my big wire cutters. That's why we have so many ends. <laughs> we around. do have extra pieces. And you can just stick this down 
anywhere you want. Just hide that little end. Um, hide the cutoff end up in the rocks or on the backside or anywhere around through there. Now, I'm just going to take one wire, th one that way, and one this way, and I kind of wrapped them around the fish's support wire, stuck that down in there. You can use a little hot glue if you want. You can wind it around branches. Um, we do this with deer pedestals, bears. Um, it's just a nice little handy piece. If you wanted more, you can use any of these twigs. Um, we've taken this. Sometimes you need to support um, yeah. one of the artificial fish, a little crappie or perch out here, and you have nothing to do it on, do it with. Um, take a piece of maybe 16-gauge um, wire, wrap it around this sure. piece, makes it real strong. Put a little bit of powdered moss, a little Elmer's glue and powdered moss on it. If it's a neal wire, it's already kind of gray and matches. And staple it and bring it out here where that fish can be yep. on. Works really good. But that's kind of how my idea of approaching it. I think yep. that makes a very attractive presentation. Um, turned an unimpressive mounted <laughs> walleye into, you know, kind of a work of art. Bend him a little bit down a little bit more. And that's, we do that a lot. Yeah, we do. I think that's, that's a nice piece. That's going to make our customer very happy. You think it will? I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And uh, that kind of concludes our 11 segment marathon. Walleye marathon is exactly <laughs> right. So next week, um, it is deer season. I mean, deer are starting to come in. Antelope, yes, it is. a lot of you have already got antelope and mule deer. Um, yep. Early season whitetails, youth season. You're going to start yep. seeing a lot of game heads coming Archery in. Archery hunters in a short are already time. out. Yep. 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 So um, it's important. I think we mentioned it last week. Very important to start on the right foot, um, mm -hmm. especially especially you beginners who are struggling, can't figure out why something doesn't fit or, or why he doesn't look like a deer. We all went through that at one time or another. Um, some people it takes a lifetime of figuring it out and some people you know, catch on a little quicker and we're here to try to point into the right direction. So next week, we're gonna talk about deer or game heads. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter whether it's a deer or a goat or a sheep or yeah. moose. Um, there's just things you want to take note of before you cape them out. Yeah, getting started. So we're yeah. going to um, deal with, we might look at some hair patterns. We might look at some, um, we're going to show you how to take careful measurements yeah. because you're going to want them when it comes time to mount them. We're yeah. going to show you a little bit about um, mannequin. Doesn't matter whose mannequin you use. Um, there's yeah. some people that have done it right. And there's some people that haven't. Yeah. And sometimes things don't fit. Um, don't blame the mannequin company. It might be the way you measured or the way you, um, yep. you know, took notes before you started. Um, it could be your tan. I mean, we find oh, different tans. Yep. It could be your thickness of fleshing or your thinness of fleshing. There's a lot of things okay. that, that uh, affect the outcome of your finished product. So we're going to deal with that next week, I think. Yep. And uh, we... Um, mentioned deer, 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 but it's going to refer to antelope and everything. It's all kind of the same. Yep. So, and um, today's giveaway, if I'm not mistaken, was one of our handcrafted yes. rock clusters. Yes, our detail painted rock cluster is our giveaway. Detail painted? Today. That's a gift. Yeah. Um, and you can use this on a bird? Absolutely anything. I saw, I saw people on... Uh, the internet asking about um, morning doves and oh, everybody's oh saying God. have extra morning doves if you're going to do yes. a morning dove but a little morning dove would look real nice sitting on our oh, little sure. rock cluster you know <laughs> in either direction this can go on the wall um, it can go on the table it can go with your fish it can go with your birds anything you can get more you can make a rock pile yep. um, they're just handy things i don't think i ever mount a fish like this without adding rock cluster. Um, I always refer to these as elements. This is an element, 
that's an element. Mm -hmm. This is an element, and yeah. people like elements. Um, going back before we sign off, um, we do have those screw hole holes in there, yeah. and the heads are buried in there. So you either need to take a little bit of moss, and we have kind of nice sheet moss. And what we do with this stuff is peel the backing off of it, take a little bit of moss like this, and I usually like to put moss on fish. It just adds a little color, but a little bit of hot glue on that and a little bit of that over your screw head, and it's yes. hid, and you didn't have to mix any paint. You didn't have to do anything. So you will want to make sure um, you hide those, and sometimes we get carried away, and I have given my fish to a customer only to be have to see him carrying it out and there's a screw head and they yeah. say oh come back come back you know we gotta fix it but this is our version of walleye a to z mm -hmm. and who is our lucky winner our lucky <coughs> excuse me our lucky winner is carlina mcdougall carlina i hope you find a good use for a rock oh yeah and a little rock base and start using these you'll like them for for everything everything everything, everything. yep Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next we'll week.